Hello educators, welcome to Strategy Sunday. Yes, May is the month of mega magnificence. And as promised, we are focusing on the online learning, the environment in which we are operating as educators. So our focus mainly is to empower you how you can utilize the various platforms, the various strategies, the various techniques to help you as you plan for the teaching learning process. And so this is our final week of content as next week we'll be looking at teachers' experiences. So for this final week, we were looking at content as to prepare you for the teaching learning environment. We are looking at the ADI model. Yes, the ADI model. Now the ADI model is a five step procedure model that has been designed to utilize in helping educators in the technology field or to utilize technology to help you as you execute your lesson planning. Now, the ADI model has five steps. Analyze, design, develop, implement, and evaluate. Let's dive into it. What are the benefits of, the, of the, this ADI model? One, it has good quality design. So it is designed to help you to get the best that you can get in the teaching learning environment once you follow the procedures accurately. The second, it enables for clear learning objectives. You will know exactly where you want to take your learners. The third is that it ensures carefully structured content. Your content will be aligned with your objectives and so the assessment will also be aligned as well. It facilitates integrated media. It is a, a model in which you can utilize a variety of media as you prepare for your lesson and as you execute your lesson. It also provides relevant student activities. It ensures assessment is strongly tied to desired learning outcomes. And finally, it allows these design principles to be identified and implemented on a systematic and thorough basis. What are the components of the model? As was said earlier, it is a five, it's a five step model. So the first step is to analyze. Now this has to do with the analysis of the learners, the learner styles, the available resources, the existing knowledge of the learners, these will all become crucial as you utilize this model to plan for your learners. What are some things you're going to be looking at when you think about your learners and existing knowledge that they have? You have to think about the cognitive and prior knowledge that they may be taking from another class or even from your class. You have to look at the physiological aspect of it, the affective and the social, and also their demographics, as will be further outlined to you when I give to you a sample of an added model lesson plan. After you would have analyzed, the next step is to design. Now, great focus is placed on identifying the learning objectives, the learning materials that we will be created and used. Also, the selection of media and technology. What sort of text will you utilize? What are the videos, the audio, the PowerPoint, the slides, Jamboard sites? What is it exactly that you're going to be utilizing to, to help you to execute this lesson? And then you must decide on the selection and use of technology, such as the LMS, a video or social media platform, what exactly will you be utilizing? And so in this case, this is where you are designing and this is the focus that you are giving to the objectives that you are going to be identifying. Next, we have D, which is development. So after you have analyzed, you move into development. Now in this phase, the decisions from steps one and two, they are created, which is to analyze and, and design. Now this takes into consideration the contents to be used. The design considerations are now created. 
the wording, the pictures to be used are selected. So if it is that you'd have decided that you're going to be doing a test, you will go ahead and you'll type up your test, you'll type up your activities, and you will now place them in the chosen LMS to see how it will be viewed by the students. It could also be a case in which you may be utilizing quizzes or Quizlet or Kahoot, and you want to see how will this game play out? How will this app play out? So you may invite your friends to assist you while you play the app, while you utilize the app to see if there are any glitches, to see if it is working effectively. You may even ask the students to do a pilot run. Let them go in and try to use it and see how it works so that you can fix this before you move on. Now, after you have developed, now it is time for implementation. In this phase, the lesson is being executed. This is the action stage of the lesson where you are actually teaching what you have analyzed, what you have designed and what you have developed. Now, all the activities are designed and are developed and are now used in this phase. The final step is E, which is evaluation. This step allows the educator to analyze several things. One, learners' reception and participation. How well did the students receive this lesson? How well did they participate in? You may also be looking at your lesson objectives. Were they attainable? Did you accomplish all the objectives for this class? Did you have to leave out any of the objectives? What are you going to be doing for the future? Were the objectives not geared towards the topic as effectively as you, you thought it would? Now, you have to look also at your teaching materials. Did the test work in Google Classroom? Were there issues with students being logged out before time? Were they PowerPoints or the, the slides that were utilized, were they effective? Were they readable? Did the students have any issues with them? How about the assessments? How were the assessments? Were they fair? Did you realize that there were mistakes in it? And you're also going to be thinking about planning for the future. So there you have it, educators, the five steps in the ADDIM model. Analyze your learners. You're going to be designing what exactly you want to do. You are going to develop where you go ahead and create, and then you are going to implement the action process of it. And after you have implemented, it is time for you to evaluate. Now, I will be sharing with you a sample added lesson plan that I would have done with my students. I'm a teacher of home economics. And here, I would have been teaching the grade 10 students the syllabus topic would have been nutrition and health, and the subtopic that I looked at was macronutrients with focus on protein. Here, I would have outlined my general objectives, my specific objectives. To help students understand nutritive value of food, their structure and how they're used in the body. What are the specific objectives that I'm looking at? What should the students be able to do? Outline the effect of heat on protein during class discussion based on experiential knowledge and class activities. Complete lab activities on protein being heated based on content covered and instructions given. And they would also be able to complete a quiz on protein based on content given. Methodologies. Presentation quiz, video viewing, three minute pause, individual assignment, class discussion, note taking, virtual lab. What were my instructional materials? Of course, I utilized the syllabus and the textbook. The content outline, where did I go to get my content? These are YouTube videos. There's also the Google Drive link where the PowerPoint and the slides would have been posted and also the content for the lesson. Video viewing. So at beginning the lesson, video viewing, students will be asked to watch the video on protein digestion and absorption. Then a discussion will be had with students using the following questions. 
where digestion begins for protein, what happens when it gets to the small intestine, what are protein enzymes. Students will be commended using stickers and GIFs for responding to the questions. Visual representation. Students will be shown a figure highlighting the process of protein digestion with the enzymes. The assignment given to the students for that, that class. They'll be required to have the following two eggs and a piece of seasoned chicken and oil. Now on to the day of the, the virtual lab activity. So remember I would have analyzed my learners because they are they, I would have been teaching them so I know their prior knowledge, their learning styles, what they are capable of doing. I would have designed in the sense that I knew exactly what the topics should be. I knew exactly what activities are going to be utilized. Then I would have developed these activities where I'm actually giving them, locating the videos, giving them the, the, the instructions that they need. And now I'm implementing. So the students are welcome to class. A thought will be shared with students as a means of encouraging them as they complete their activities for the day. Then they have a virtual lab activity. Students will be scheduled for monitoring using Google Meet and WhatsApp video call. Again, the context of the students. Some students were able to utilize the Google Classroom. For some, their email didn't work and so they're not in the classroom. I have to facilitate them via WhatsApp video call. They will be instructed to put on their PPE, that is their personal protective equipment, their lab coat, their head covering. They'll be instructed to begin working from one task to the next. Students will be required to complete the lab by taking pictures, writing up the lab report, and submit to Google Classroom. Of course, for those who don't have Google Classroom, they would have submitted it to me. Now, here it is, an example of the students at home. This is their home, and they would have their various, um, the outline of their various uh, dishes, the, the, their pots, their utensils, the eggs, the chicken, as you can see, right? So you're seeing their eggs, their frying pan, their balls, their seasoned chicken in that bowl. Here they would have been poaching egg in this pot right here. And then of course they utilize their distilled uh, vinegar to help them with the poaching. Of course, you see them having their frying pots on the stove, their eggs being poured into the pot, and you have chicken there being um, fried. So the students will have completed this virtual lab at home. Then I will now go to evaluating, which is the final phase. This is actually in my lesson where I evaluated the lesson. So one, I'm evaluating here the learner's participation and reception. Students actively participated in class activities given with 40% completing the tasks assigned. I also look at the challenges that they have. Did, they, did the objectives go through? Were they met? Um, what is it? So here it is in completing virtual lab, only 15% of the class completed as they have socioeconomic challenges related to lack of resources such as a stove. So some students backed out from doing the lab because one, they may not have an inside kitchen that they may want teacher to see even though they were prompted. You're not sending the pictures to me in the group, but you'll be sending them to me where I'm the only person that can see them. But of course, for pride and whatever else, some students will share with because they have an outside kitchen or they don't have the necessary resources that they may need to use. Do I mark them down? Do I give them zero? No, I can't because this is their challenge that they have. So these students will complete activity when school reopens for them in January. And of course, sure did when school reopened in January and they came to school, they were able to complete that lab at school. Educators, these are the different ways in which we can engage our learners. These strategies and techniques and models, they're there for us to utilize. All we need to do is to think about the students that we have. Think about their future. Think about their context. What is it that we will be imparting to them in the online setting? Or even if we go to school physically, what is it that we will be doing that is different? 
educators that implore you to go ahead try out these models of course it is not going to be perfect at once it takes trial and error one of the the, the, the drawbacks to the adding model or any system in which you have to be planning technologically based for the teaching learning environment it will take a lot of time you'd have to sit and think about it and process exactly what you're going to be do, doing so that it can be effective nevertheless give it a try was this video beneficial to you were there tips given here that you can actually utilize in your lesson as you plan for the students and the teaching learning process if so go ahead like this video subscribe to the channel share this link with another colleague or other friends that can come on and benefit from this sort of information don't forget to leave your comments in the comment section. I look forward to them each week. I have been seeing your DMs. I've been seeing your WhatsApp texts. I've been receiving your calls to say how well you have been benefiting from this session for the mega magnificent month of May. Thank you so much educators for always viewing and also for subscribing. Thank you to my 180 subscribers. Let us see how best you can assist me to get to 200 subscribers by the end of this month. Is it possible? Yes, it can be. Educators, I wish for you all the best as you go out this week and try these, this, this, this added model as you plan your lesson to see how effective you can get at planning lessons with this model and also to empower your students. I am Carla Boswell Lewis. Director for Strategic Educational Consultancy Services, where my only mission is to empower you educators.